Hello, welcome to Verbling. I am Teacher Oakley, and for the next hour, we are going to be learning some very practical, basic vocabulary to talk about domestic animals. Uh, we will do this by uh, using some exercises, fill in the blank, mix and match, picture identification, and also discussion. We'll talk about uh, our experiences with domestic animals. Of course, domestic animals include, well, mm, two basic groups. You have pets, meow, ruff, ruff, and uh, farm animals, <laughs> Okay. Uh, I, myself, grew up on a very small farm. One of my best friends as a kid was a farmer. So I know a lot of the verbs involved in farming. I'll be sharing those with you. Uh, and I'm very interested to converse with you, the students, about uh, your experiences with uh, critters, animals, your pets, or uh, if you've had any experience with farming. Uh, in any case, I look forward to talking to you. So please join me here at Verbling. We'll get started talking about domestic animals, learning some basic nouns, as well as uh, I'll be throwing in, believe me, plenty of uh, verbs, and uh, we'll learn words associated with uh, taking care of animals, which, of course, we have to do with domestic animals. We need to take care of them. Uh, okay. All right, well, come on in, and as soon as I get a student, well, I'll get started. We're going to start off with some kind of basic uh, discussion about pets. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, hello, Ryota. Ryota. Hi, Ogri. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm fine. Good. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, today we're, our topic for discussion and learning vocabulary is domestic animals. So um, the first thing I want to ask everyone as I do a little microphone check and say hello is, do you have any pets? So, Ryota, do you have any pets? Uh, I don't have right now, but I used to have... Uh, a uh, goldfish and the uh, uh, small bird. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, all right. Do you think you'll have pets in the future? Uh, yeah, we hope. Yeah, we hope have okay. some. Yeah, dog or cat. Yes. Okay. Have a dog or a cat would be better than some. If you say some, you need to say plural. Some dogs. And some uh, cats. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well then, okay. plural. All right. All right. All right. Uh, let me also welcome uh, Cristiano. Hello, Cristiano. Hello. Welcome Hello. Hello. Thank you. Hi, Cristiano. How about yourself? Do you have any pets? Oh, I have no pets. No pets. Okay. No pets. Uh, have you Have you ever had pets? Uh, I, I've already had, but uh, nowadays I'm living in an apartment. Okay. Not a good place to keep a pet elephant. Probably. Exactly. Uh, all right. Okay, uh, let me welcome some others. Heidi, hello. Hello, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. Um, Heidi, I can't remember, do you have any pets? Uh, because I'm living in a condo. Uh, uh, residents are not allowed to have ah. any pets. No pets allowed. So a small bird, it's okay, but mm. I don't want to have such kind of animals. I like cats. Ah, okay. But no cats allowed. No. Yeah. All right. I understand. Okay. Uh, lots of students, so let me continue. Uh, Polony? Yes. Hello? 
Hello. Hello. Uh, hi, Polony. Um, welcome to the class. Uh, you're welcome. Um, Polony, how about you? Do you have any pets? Um, not with me right now, but I do have two cats uh, living back in my hometown. I really do love cats. <laughs> And I, I'm looking forward to seeing them again sometime. Soon. Okay. All right. Sometimes when we um, are talking about personality, all right, it may be typical, for example, uh, to ask a person once you get to know them a little bit. So, uh, do you consider yourself a cat person or a dog person? Sometimes English oh. speakers like to. Yeah, I've seen that. I've heard that term before, Emma. I'm mm -hmm. definitely a cat person. Right. All the okay. way. Sometimes we we kind of I don't know divide up the personality types that way. It's a typical uh, way of discussing personality. Okay. Uh, all right. All right, cat cat lady. <laughs> okay. We'll talk to you later. Um, let me. Also, welcome Seth. Hi, Seth. How are you? Hi, Apli. Hi, Hi thanks. Great. How about you, Seth? Any pets? Yes, I have uh, a dog, a basset hound yeah. dog. A basset yes. hound? Oh, cool. Yes. Yeah. Big ears. Uh, yeah, big ears. Yeah, big ears. I'm familiar. Um, one of my best friends had a basset hound. Uh, Mackie. I remember the dog's name. I can't remember his wife's name, but I remember his dog's name. <laughs> yes, yeah. my pet, my my pet name uh, called Jagger. Jag Jagger. Jagger, <laughs> like Mike Jagger. <laughs> yes. Oh, like oh, like Mick Jagger, Rolling yes. Stones. <laughs> yes. My name Terrific. Is Jagger. Yes. That's great. Uh, another friend of mine uh, back in the United States had uh, a dog named. Bob, <laughs> okay. which is very funny because in conversations we would have to designate, um, yes, she's coming to the party with Bob, Bob the dog, you, you would have to say Bob the dog because there's so many people named Bob, you know, yeah. yes, Bob the dog, Bob the dog is outside, anyway, kind of funny, uh, all right, let me also welcome Carlos to the class, hi Carlos. Hello, teacher. Hi, how are you today? I'm fine today. Okay, Thanks. cool. How about you? You got any pets? Yes, I I have uh, two dogs and a cat. Wow, okay, cool. What kind of dogs do you have? Um, <laughs> it, my dog... Uh, doesn't have a race or pedigree. <laughs> okay. Doesn't I have a race. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Race. Well, let's, let's, we wouldn't say race. <laughs> you could talk about kind of dog, type of dog, or breed of dog. All right. So, um, okay. So more formally, when your dog is mixed up, which I, I think the mixed breed. We call that a mixed breed dog, more formally or informally, and uh, a little bit derogatory, a little bit negative. A mongrel. He's a mongrel. All right. Same thing. Mixed breed or a mongrel. Okay. I think mixed breed dogs are a lot are smarter, a lot of the time. You know, you get those chromosomes and genetic material mixing up. You can sometimes. <laughs> Less inbreeding problems, so that's cool. I uh, I like that. Um, Carlos, I, I used to have a dog that was um, under okay, half beagle and half Saint Bernard. If you can imagine, a beagle is the kind of small hunting dog. It's quite small, a little stick-up tail, and a Saint Bernard is that really huge, heavy dog that. In cartoons, is pictured carrying rum or water to the stranded skier in the Alps. Really, really 
enormous dog. He was a very funny looking dog because he looked exactly like a beagle, but a beagle is usually, you know, I don't know, maybe this tall. They're fairly small, but St. Bernard is up to your hip. So he looked exactly like a beagle, but he was the size of a St. Bernard. He was enormous. He looked like some kind of monster. It was great. Anyway, I like mixed breed dogs. Uh, okay. Let me continue. Keiko. Hey, Howdy. teacher. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. How about you? Do you have any pets? Now I, nowadays, I don't have teacher. But when I live... In a country, in the countryside, in a farm, I had uh, dogs, cats, um, roosters, hens, <laughs> etc. Etc. Okay, cool. We'll talk more about that later. I also, I grew up when I was a kid. I had to. Uh, we had a small farm, and I had to feed the chickens, slop the hogs. Feed the cow, feed the horse. We also had a lot of animals. Uh, okay, we'll talk about that some more later. Um, Mark, welcome to the class. Hello, Thank hello. You. Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you for asking. Awesome. Okay, very good. <laughs> how about you, Mark? you have any pets? Not anymore, you know. I used to have, when I was a kid, I had a dog, a mongrel, named John Lennon, by the way, <laughs> but not John anymore. John Lennon. John yeah. Lennon meet Mick Jagger. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> and not anymore, you know. Nowadays I'm always in a in a hurry, and I don't have time for pets. But I'm definitely, I would, if I could, I would try a cat. I think they are more independent than dogs. And so yeah. It'll be nice. That's the general consensus. Is that yeah. Yeah. I've had dogs and cats before, so I don't consider myself a cat person or a dog person, but I don't know. Kind of prefer dogs. But they take more time. You're you're exactly correct. They take more effort than a cat, I think. Anyway. Yeah, uh sure. okay. Let me uh finally I can get to Anna Christina. Uh hi Anna. Hi, Oti. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you very much. How are you today? Excellent, teacher. Thank you. Great, glad to hear it. Uh, how about you, uh, Anna? You do you have a pet? Or pets? I love I love the the animals, but I ha I live in a small house, and I can't to have a pet. I would like to have a a dog, a rabbit. But it's difficult because I have to work every day, and I don't have time for. Right. For, yes. A dog for the, and a oh. rabbit. I don't know if that's a good combombination. <laughs> 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 like having a mouse and a cat. Yeah, you know. Uh, okay. All right, Anna. You said I love the animals. Really, you should say I love animals. When we have countable nouns. I love cats. I love dogs. We don't need an article. We can just use the plural to talk about them in general. So, uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, very good. Thank you, everyone. Um, all right. Let's talk real, real basic. We'll zip through these. Uh, we'll zip through some of these. Do this fast. Uh, we're going to do a little mix and match with pictures. Quite simple, really. Should be a piece of cake. Uh, okay. Uh, Ryota. Um, okay. Looking at the uh, the vocabulary words, the nouns, the names of these things, what these things are. Uh, let's look at go look at the pictures one by one. What is this creature? So number one. Yeah. Uh, Ra rabbit is a rabbit. Okay. Uh, Ry Ryoto, do many people have rabbits as pets in Japan? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. In the 
in the school, so they have uh, uh, some rabbits. Oh, really? But yeah, uh. so they they raise a rabbit, or they take care of them. So in the school, so okay. children take care of them. Interesting. Okay, they they do that in America as well. Sometimes a, a class of students, young students. Uh -huh. We'll have um, maybe some fish or a turtle, uh, what, maybe not a rabbit, maybe a guinea pig, but uh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, I, I have to ask, Ryota, have you ever eaten a rabbit? Have you ever eaten a rabbit? No, I never eat before. I never eat. It's it's tasty. <laughs> 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 I don't know. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, okay, moving on. Chris, Cristiano, number two. Wow. Uh, it, it's a fish, Go goldfish. Yeah, it looks kind of skinny to be a goldfish to me. Looks more like a tasty trout. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I've already had uh, a, a great meal with fish. With fish, but probably not goldfish. Yeah, probably not goldfish. Probably not. Sometimes, uh, this is a terrible thing, horrible really, but sometimes uh, an initiation to uh, a fraternity, or it used to be, I don't think maybe, not anymore, but used to be maybe one of the initiation one of the trials to be accepted in a fraternity, you would have to swallow a goldfish. Would you Would you ever do that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you would? <laughs> swallow a goldfish? Okay. Uh, uh, I'd like to do it. You, you would like to do it? Okay. <laughs> oh, my God. Very good. Okay. Well. A brave guy. Okay. All right, go for it, buddy. All right, Heidi. Uh, of course, number three. A cat. It is a cat. Uh, okay, what's your favorite breed of cat? We also just like um, dogs or breeds of cats. Before um, uh, we were living in another apartment, we were allowed to have some pets. Then I, I had Siamese. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Siamese cats are the ones that are white, uh, right? White and the, um, the end of the legs and the oh, tail and the face are br um, chocolate brown. Ah. And its eyes are blue, very beautiful blue, like sky. Right. And when it was in a dark breath, uh, the eyes sh was shining red color. Like oh, scary. Blue. <laughs> Scary. Ooh, red glowing eyes. Frightening. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, just like dogs, there are different breeds of cats. All right. Let's keep going uh, here. Got plenty of other material. So, Polony. <laughs> okay. How about picture number four? That's a uh, canary. Okay, uh, yeah, although it looks more like a crow to me, maybe not a great picture, but, <laughs> okay. Uh, Polony, have you ever heard the expression, a canary in a coal mine? Oh, yes. Uh, actually, I haven't heard someone say it, but I've seen it, and uh, it's when... Uh-huh. Um... I don't know why people would say that, but I know it's because they would throw like canaries into the, the the mines to see if it's safe. That's right, because they many times um, I think methane gas or maybe maybe other toxic gases would be released when the miners were digging below the ground, and the canary is more susceptible. Uh, to these to methane gas, and the canary would die, and then they would know <laughs> really run, run away, run away. So, so this now is an uh, an idiomatic expression now, 
it's he's a canary in a coal mine, like he's a sacrifice, okay, or something um, is a sacrifice, or something is a clear sign of danger or trouble. Maybe not a person. Maybe not. Uh, maybe um, maybe it would refer to something that is the first sign of something dangerous. Okay. Okay. Uh, like mm -hmm. that, so it has that idiomatic meaning. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. Canaries, of course, people have different types of birds as pets. Canary is just one type. Or canaries are yellow, aren't they? I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. yeah, they are, usually. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, let's keep it moving. Seth, this creature down here, number five, is a what? Uh, it's tortoise. Okay, tortoise. 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 Yeah. Tortoise. Tortoise. Uh, okay. okay, I don't know if it's a tortoise or the other word. Uh, what's the other, besides tortoise, very much related creature in the same family, I guess? Uh, do you know what word I'm searching for here, Seth? Uh, uh, well, turtle is what I'm looking for. Turtle. I, don't, uh, turtle. I don't know. Tortoise and a turtle look pretty much the same to me. Turtle. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, what's the difference between a tortoise and a turtle? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what is the difference. <laughs> Not totally sure myself, but I think a turtle. Um, I think it's more associated with the water, but I'm not entirely sure about this, to be honest. And a tortoise. Some tortoises live more on land. Um, anybody okay. wants to correct me, feel free, because I'm not 100% sure of what I'm talking about okay. here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I. I believe that's it. All right. Carlos. Okay, number six. Number six um, is a dog. Sure it is. Um, what do you, what kind of, what breed of dog do you think that is? I have no idea. <laughs> so you, you can say anything. I think uh, this dog is a Doberman. Maybe a Doberman. Well, Doberman has a longer snout. Their nose. Uh, okay. Is there sometimes a nose for any animal? Actually, a pig has a long snout, for example. But maybe I, I don't know. What's your favorite breed of dog? Okay, my favorite breed of dog. Uh, is a French bull. Really? Uh, yeah. This kind of dog. Uh, dogs are really kind. Kind. They're supposed to be very intelligent as well. Yeah. Supposedly, from what I've read. Yeah. I don't know. I've never had a poodle, to be honest. I, I'm not sure. But that's what they say. Uh... Okay, keep it moving. Keiko, number seven is what? <laughs> Let's see. Indian pig, teacher. Oh, Guinea. Guinea pig. Uh, Guinea. It's pronounced Guinea. Guinea pig. Guinea, Guinea pig. pig. Yeah, okay. What does it mean, Keiko, if I say I'm going to use you as a guinea pig? <laughs> you will be my guinea pig. What am I? What do I mean? Again, very colloquial, very idiomatic. Okay, you students uh, I, will I, be my I, guinea pigs. Yeah. Take out any idea? Yeah. I, I suppose it to be people subordinated. Not exactly. To another, to another person. Not exactly. Actually, it's become idiomatic. Well, nowadays people do experiments on rats, 
sometimes a month. Ah, okay. Grab it. Okay. Okay. But I, I guess in the past they used to do kinds of experiments, run them through a maze, test them. They used to use guinea pigs a lot, I suppose. Because this expression, if I tell you guys, all right, you students will be my guinea pigs, it means maybe I'm testing out a new lesson plan, something I've never done before. And I want you guys to be my guinea pigs. Basically, it means I'm telling you I'm going to experiment with you as my subject. You'll be my the subject of my experiment. I'm going to test something on you. Okay. So, you... Whatever. For me, maybe I'd be testing a lesson plan to see how it worked. I'm going to make you guys my guinea pigs <laughs> for the class. <laughs> All right? So, okay. Uh, that's a good one to know because it's fairly common, a common idea. Uh, okay. Moving on. Uh, Mark, number eight. Yeah. Uh, it's a mouse. It's a mouse. I can't tell if it's a mouse or a rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe a rat. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, but... Okay, obviously, mice... Okay, mouse, mice, plural. Two mice, yep. one mouse. Um, mice and rats are considered... Some people keep them as pets. They do. Um, but mostly they're considered as vermin. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know that word vermin? Uh, what other animals or creatures would, could be considered as vermin? Uh, animals that are harmful or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, animals that are harmful, maybe spread disease. Um, wow. Right. Rats, mice, cockroaches. Okay. Uh, insects, flies, and ants. Right. Yep. Right. Any any animal that is invasive and to human beings, we could call them vermin. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Christina, Anna, Christina. Uh, I want to yeah. talk to you about exotic pets. All right, another classification of pets are exotic pets, um, like parrots, snakes, scorpions, lizards, um, other creatures. In, in your country, Anna Christina, do people keep exotic pets? Yes, the people, uh, the people uh, that have uh, big houses. <laughs> uh, <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. Remember, I I I live in the in the in the in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean, the people like to have whatever kind of pet. Okay, a wide variety of types of pets. Okay. Maybe parrot, uh, bird, um, scorpions. Um, turtle. Uh -huh. um, uh, my my roommate in university had a uh, had a tarantula. Do you know what a tarantula is? No. It's that. Whoa. It's that big. Somebody knows it. <laughs> it's that big, hairy, ugly. Nasty, ah, scary looking spider. spider. Yeah. Spider. It's as big as your hand. Yeah. He used, he used to scare all the girls in my university. My neighbor, had, my neighbor had a pig. Has a pig? Really? A little pig, yes. Yes, a little, a little pig. Okay. Some people like to keep those little Vietnamese pigs. Is it one of those? Do you know? A big. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about having these things, snakes and scorpions and tarantulas, lizards. I don't know. Another friend of mine had a lizard, a monitor lizard, and it bit off a chunk of his arm. It's kind of dangerous. 
Another friend of mine had a, a boa constrictor, and it escaped. <laughs> it got away. I find that stuff kind of scary. Uh, okay, let's let's talk about talking about pets uh, for a minute here. Oh, okay, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little fill in the blank exercise here uh, to talk about talk about pets. Uh, okay. Back to you, Ryota. Um, match the pets uh, with uh, the conversation, what they're talking about. So go ahead and read number one. Okay. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, one, I don't like it when I have to take him for a walk in the rain. And I hate it when he jumped all over the sofa with his moody paw. Pose. Okay, what animal are we talking about? A fish? <laughs> 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 Probably not. What animal are we talking about here, Rayosa? Mm. Cat? Uh, d really? Do you take your cat for a walk? Uh, uh, no. In the rain? Yeah, what, what animal? Horse? horse. You take your horse for a walk? <laughs> <laughs> the horse jumps on your sofa? Oh my goodness. Dog? Maybe it's a little pony. It's a little pony. <laughs> a little pony. Yeah, okay. Probably a dog, okay. Okay. Right, right. You, we uh, usually, in the verb, you take your dog for a walk, all right? Mm -hmm. You can have a walk or you can take a walk, you yourself. But you have to, we always use the verb take, take your dog for a walk. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, because you're leading him, you know. Um, okay, he jumps on the sofa with his muddy paws. The feet of a dog or a cat, those kind of padded, padded feet, you know, that dogs and cats have, uh, we call those paws. Cat's paws. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. Um, uh, Cristiano. Yeah, I'm here. Number two. Okay. Uh, she starts purring as soon as anybody strokes her. Uh, is it? Okay. What uh, animal is that? It's about a cat. It, it is about a cat. All right. Purring is that soft um, sound that cats make. Really weird sound if you think about it, but it's almost inside their bodies. Kind of sounds like a vibrating sound. Yeah. Yeah, right. Okay, and you stroke the cat or you pet the cat is the verb. You, you pet your cat. Um, okay. you, or a dog. And Okay, when, of course, you you move your hand, oops, you move your hand in a, a, a motion along the line of their hair, of course, because if you, um, <laughs> backwards, if you pet a cat backwards, they're going to freak out, right? <laughs> yeah. They're not going to be happy about that. Um, in fact, um, uh, if you're stroking me the wrong way, okay, another idiom related to animals and pets. If you're stroking me the wrong way, it's the idea of like a cat. When you pet them from their tail up to their head, it's going to really annoy them. So if I say you're stroking me the wrong way, that's what it's, uh, <laughs> that's what it's referring to that concept. In other words, you're, you're treating me in a way I find very, very offensive and really bothers me. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, very good. Moving on. Heidi, number three. Keep him in a sieve at the farm in the village. I've got to feed him every, every morning. Um, horse. It would be a horse. Okay. Place you keep a horse is called a stable, a little room, yeah. kind of a room, sort of. Uh, okay. 
Um, all right. A room inside to protect him from the elements and often has some hay in it or what have you. Okay. Heidi, have you ever ridden a horse? I no, never. Um, I'm acrophobia. I can't do that. Okay. Acrophobia, what is that? Uh, I hate falling. Height. Height. Ah, yes. Well, okay. It's a little scary when you're on the top of a horse. You go horseback riding. Here's another verb. Mm -hmm. you, or you ride horseback. Horseback riding. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. My sister had a horse, which she did not take care of when I was young, so I had to take care of it and exercise it. And I've fallen off a horse so many times. <laughs> it's not funny. And going back to idioms, it's like falling off a horse or it's like falling off a chair, we can say, uh, meaning it's very easy. It's very easy to fall off a horse, so you may be <laughs> – it's not hard to do. Um, horses are used as a for, uh, race, horse race. Yes, they are. And in Japan, uh, very northern part, uh, there's horse race, another one. Their uh, legs are very uh, what, uh, thick, so usually uh -huh. they uh, pull some carriage. Aha. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Um, right. You have racing horses and you have work horses. Work horses race. It's very exciting. They're uh, pulling a heavy carriage and... Uh -huh. <laughs> and right. Yes, yeah, it's different from usual horse race. Yes, it is. I actually ha I worked with a cousin of mine when I was younger, and he was a lumberjack. He cut down trees. Okay, and um, instead of using a tractor to haul out the giant, giant, giant tree trunks, he used horses. He used work horses. Really, massively big strong workhorses. Um, we measure horses in what are called hands. If you hold your, your left hand up and put your right hand on top of that hand, that's one hand. Okay? And uh, we measure horses by how many hands tall. And a typical riding horse might be 14 or 15 hands. But these horses were 17, 18 hands high. They were monsters. And, and it was really... I, I've n rarely seen anything more impressive. They could haul out three trees that were – you could not put your arms around the tree. They were so big and long. Um, I never – up a hill in the mud, just amazingly powerful beasts, which, of course, is where we got the idea of horsepower. I All right? about the big horsepower. This car yeah. has a um, 100 uh, horsepower or something. Right, exactly, and that's where we get that idea of the. It, it translates directly into power and uh, how much energy and power like an engine has, and uh, it's quite understandable when you see these workhorses work. They have massive power. It's really impressive. I agree with you, Heidi. It's really something to see. Uh, okay. Um, uh, okay, Polony, actually, uh, number four. Okay, wait. So, do I read that? Yeah, please. Okay. I have to feed them twice a day and change the water in the tank every two weeks. Okay. That's a... Uh, the tropical fish. Obviously. Okay. Uh, okay. Do you know how long the memory span of a goldfish is? Three seconds. <laughs> is, that, um, is that it? I thought it was eight seconds. Maybe it's... Now I can't remember. Now I'm not sure. You make me question myself. It's very um, short. Three, five, eight seconds, something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So when they swim around the tank, they forget that they just swam that way. That's why they can <laughs> happily swim back and, forth, it's, back and forth. It's good that they don't hold any re regrets, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Although, yeah. The problem is, the no problem remorse. with that, no remorse, yes. 
But of course, the problem with that is they forget that they just ate. So it's very easy to overfeed fish. They're so stupid they forgot. Oh, I just, <laughs> I just ate eight seconds ago. But, um, yeah. Anyway, oh, okay. Have you ever had fish, Polony? Um, I mean, my mom had uh, a fish tank with a lot of tropical yeah. fish in it. Cool. And uh, I don't know it was kind of cool to look at, but it was so uh, high main maintenance that yeah. I don't think it's worth it. Like you know, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Now like, sometimes. Oh wait, sorry. Sometimes she would ask me to measure the PhD, the water, and that was so boring. <laughs> okay, the pH, the acidity of the water, the pH, yeah, it has yes. to be right. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's so many factors. Now, keeping fish as a pet is all right. You can you can have a cat, you can have a dog, you can have a pet pig. Those that's your you have a pet, but. Keeping fish, we actually refer to that as being a hobby because it takes a lot of investment in time, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's considered actually as a hobby, not just having a pet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thanks, Polony. Uh, moving on, Seth. Mm -hmm. Number five, yes. Seth. Please. Okay, yes. Um... He's got a cage in the kitchen, but sometimes I let him out uh, to sit on, on my shoulder. He can say a few words. It's a parrot. It's a parrot. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have any experience with a with a talking bird, parrots or minor birds? Um, um, only with my family. Uh, they have a, a parrot, but in my home, never have. Ah, does your parents, does your parents' bird say any words? Um, yes, uh, bad words. Bad words, yep. <laughs> yes, bad words. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. My learn, learn yep. with the reputation. That's right. My, my, uh, I had a friend in high school, and they had a mina bird. It's a black bird with a kind of yellow bill. But anyway, they also learn to mimic or imitate the human voice. And, uh, he, well, you know, two teenage sons and a teenage daughter, this, this bird could swear like a pirate. The most foul-mouthed bird you've ever heard. <laughs> really <laughs> terrible. Really awful. Anyway, yeah, I know what you mean. I really do. Uh, okay, let's talk a f about a few associated uh, words with uh, riding a horse. Uh, uh, let's see if we can zip through this. Carlos, okay, match the words with the pictures. Okay, this might be interesting. Number one, what is this thing here? Hmm. I think uh, harness. Okay, harness. Yes. Uh, okay. I I would have said bridle, but uh, all right, fine. Harness or bridle, I guess. How about you? Have you ever ridden a horse, Carlos? Yes, teacher. In in a horse, and a monkey also. You rode a monkey? Yeah. What? Don donkey, donkey, donkey. Donkey, I thought you said a monkey. Yeah. <laughs> donkey, donkey. Uh, I couldn't remember donkey. that. <laughs> oh my goodness. I, I just had a very funny picture in my head there. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to imagine what kind of saddle that you would use for a monkey. A monkey saddle. I took that the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Let me erase that. Uh, yeah, try to erase that picture from your mind. Uh, I, okay. All right. Uh, Keiko, I'm going out of order here, but what's this next one over here, number three? It's a saddle, teacher. It certainly is. 
Um, and this word in English can be a verb. It, obviously, it can mean to saddle a horse, to put this seat. This is where you sit on a horse. But um, uh, what does it mean if you're saddled with a lot of debt? A lot of debt. That uh, when you are overcome of of that of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're For overcome. example, when, when you cannot make the the ends meet to pay your right. accounts, your bills. There you go. You can't make ends meet. You're saddled with debt. You have too much. You're covered with debt. That's it. Very common phrase, by the way. Co-location. Saddled with debt. The company's saddled with debt. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, of course, uh, Keiko, have you ever ridden a horse? Yes, teacher. When I was a child, I... I saddled horses many times and and rode um, uh, almost every day. Okay. And uh, did you did you use an English saddle or a Western saddle? Do you know what I mean? Did you use an English saddle or a Western saddle, Keiko? I didn't use uh, I didn't use this kind of saddle. I used uh -huh. um, a kind of saddle who has um, a more rec rectangular uh, leather, lateral leather. I I okay. cannot say. Okay. If it uh, okay, this picture here is uh, is an English saddle. Um, a Western saddle. Oops, sorry. Oops, let me put that back up there. Wrong click there. Sorry about that. Okay, an English saddle. This is an English saddle. Um, it's open in the front. A Western saddle has a pommel here. There's a little thing sticking up for your. If you're a cowboy, you need to put your rope somewhere. <laughs> uh, so it has a pommel, like a little handle here. It's called a western saddle. Yeah, yeah. The, the kind the kind I used uh, was um, with this 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 element you are you see, yeah. you, you told us, and the, in front of it. Uh, there was uh, uh, another piece to ah. like a like a, a transverse in the transver transversal. Okay. I don't All know right. how, how to say. Uh, we could we could could uh, grab our hands on it. Right. Okay. Yeah. I, I see what you mean. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Where's ah number two? Oh, down here. Oh, oh that's where it is. Uh, okay. Let me let me move on here. Uh, Mark, you know what this thing is? Number two. It's actually in the horse's mouth. Yeah, I think it's a bit. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's a metal piece that actually stays in their mouth that helps you control the horse. If you, I, I, another idiom, I mean, there's a lot of idioms associated with these things. If you take the bit, uh, it could refer to a horse, but it could refer even to a person. What do you think that means? Mm. Any idea? Maybe you allowed them to um, you allowed them to do something? 
you well, know, I don't know kind of. because you have something like that in Portuguese, I think, but I'm Do not you? sure. Okay. Yeah. If, okay, the new employee really took the bit, meaning he energetically started out working, but um, more, not only that, he took the bit, he really jumped forward and started like a horse when the horse jumps forward. But there's also the element he, be, he energetically started working in the direction you wanted him to work. Okay, you told him to start making sales, and he really took the bit. He went to write exactly the perfect customers. He did exactly the job you wanted him to do. So there's okay. two elements, energetically, energetically start and also following the direction, like a horse. Like the bit controls the horse, same kind of idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Teacher. Y yes, Keiko? The bit is number two. Yeah. You can't even really see it from this picture, honestly, because it's a metal piece that goes into their mouth. You can see the end yeah. of it here. Yeah. You, you really can only see the end of it because you don't have a front picture, but yeah, that's the metal piece that actually is in their mouth. Uh, yeah, it, it is useful to conduct the, the animal, the direction. Exactly. To, to make the, the, the animal stop, stop. Exactly. Stop, start, go left, go right. Um, okay. Um, moving on, uh, okay, Anna, Christina, um, four is kind of obvious, that's obviously the hat, because it's a hat, a riding hat, Let's skip this one, what is uh, number five? Number five, um, <clears throat> Maybe mm -hmm. um, maybe the harness. Uh, no, that, that's the the harness is the system of straps around the head. Stirrups? Stirrups. 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 Yeah, this, this would be where your foot would go, or feet, um, one on each side of the horse. Yeah, the stirrups, this is where you put your foot. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, and uh, number six here is the whip or sometimes called this a crop, whip or crop, uh, which you use to make the, the horse go faster. You use a, a whip or a crop. Um, okay, I don't really see it as necessary. How, you know how, uh, Anna Christina, have you ever made, uh, have you ever ridden a horse? Okay. And Anna, have you ever ridden a horse? No, teacher. <laughs> no. Okay. No. So you, all right. You probably don't know this. To make the horse go faster, you could use a crop, but I never saw the reason myself. You also use the stirrups. You kick your feet back. Um, or even just a good horse, you can just squeeze your legs. You don't even need the stirrups. Um, all right. You probably don't know, but... Uh, which, if you ride a horse, which verb is the fastest, Anna? What do you think? Trot, gallop, canter? <laughs> Trot. Trot, no, that's actually the slowest. Uh, okay. Gallop. Gallop is the quickest. That's full out running for a horse. <laughs> gallop. So, uh... 
We actually use these for human beings. Uh, okay. Um, you can actually use these to talk about people. Trot on over here. Okay. Trot is that little... Canter's a little faster. Canter's something in between. It looks a little unnatural when you see it, but I guess to a horse it's natural. But anyway, um, we never use canter for a person, but I, I, I've heard people say, trot on over here, like commanding somebody to come. Trot on over here and give me that report or whatever. It's very it's derogatory and demeaning, of course. You're treating someone like an animal. He galloped across the field. That's just fine. That's kind of neutral, but uh, okay. Let's see how fast. We've only got a few minutes. Let's see how fast we can uh, we can identify these creatures. So I have a question. Sure. What's Is that? Um, the cow cowboys are wearing uh, boots, co cowboy boots. Yes. On the side of boot, there are um, something. Aha. The horse to run faster. Right. Spurs. Huh? Absolutely. What? Spurs. Yes. Sure. Yes, with an S. Well, no, you can have a spur, I guess, just like you can have a sock, usually, obviously, in pairs. Spurs, right, they have little, like, stars on the end, a little star wheel, right, and they would use, cowboys would use those, attach them to their boots, again, to make the horse go faster, right. You are correct. Um so we actually use this as a verb as well. You spur somebody on. Um, you encourage them, maybe even hmm, forcefully encourage someone to do something. You spur them on. Okay, so actually, good one. And since you ask, um, what are those crazy pants that uh, cowboys wear that often made of leather? They don't. They don't have a crotch. <laughs> they don't have a crotch area. They're just for the legs, so that their legs actually don't get irritated rubbing against the saddle and the horse. Anybody know what those are called? Those are called chaps. Feature. No, not on the feet. On the legs. But not on your bottom. They're they're only on the sides of your legs. Actually, they're they're called chaps. Anyway, okay, <laughs> interesting. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, we probably don't have time, but Ryota. All right, yeah. what is? Uh, let's see if we can do these real fast. Let's challenge ourselves. Number one, what is it? A pony. No. Hmm? I don't think so. I could be wrong. Donkey. A donkey, yeah. Look, notice the long ears. Okay, that's a donkey. And what sound does a donkey make? <laughs> ee ah, ee ah. See, you hear your farm animal sounds. Okay, uh, Cristiano, number seven. What is that? It's a sheep. Okay, and it makes what sound? <laughs> Bad. Oh, excellent. Two points for you. Okay. Yeah. Heidi, number two. Duck or goose? Yeah, it has a shorter neck, so... Uh, see, the one with the long neck is probably the goose. I think that's a duck. And a duck says? Mm -hmm. What does a duck say in Japan? Yeah. What? No, a duck doesn't say in Japan. What does a duck say? <laughs> what sound does a duck make? <laughs> <laughs> okay, in English, in English we say quack, quack, quack. Uh, all right. Anyway, Polony, number eight. That's a pig. That's a pig. And what sound does he make? Oink, oink. Oink, oink, oink. In English, O N I. Uh, so sorry, O I N K. Okay, very good. Oink. Seth, number three. Number three. The goat. It's a goat. All right. All right. And what sound does a goat make? Meh. Oh, very good. Two points. Yes. <laughs> Carlos, number nine. 
uh, number nine is a uh, cow. Of course it is. And the cow <laughs> says... And the cow says what? Uh, number nine. Uh, yeah. Moo, very good. What's, very good. Colony, you are correct. Onomatopoeia. Oik, ba, moo. These are... Um, words that represent the sounds we hear. Um, so she asked about donkey. Um, uh, it's very funny, actually. There used to be a television show uh, primarily about country comedy, country western singing called Hee Haw on television. Hee Haw. That sounds like something uh, a cowboy would say. Yeah, well, very close. Yeehaw with a Y. Um, we do ascribe to cowboys, so you're, you're very correct. All right. Okay. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. Oh well, well, we're pretty much out of time, but okay. Keiko, number number four is hen. A hen. And number eleven is rooster. Very good. They're both chickens, but one's a hen, one's a rooster. That's correct. The masculine of wren, hen. That's right. Masculine and feminine. All right. Rooster, what? okay. Rooster. 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 With an R. Uh, okay, I'll write it. All right. Uh, okay, uh, over there in Brazil, what does a rooster say? Cacarioco. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Uh, in English, we would write it like this: cock a doodle doo. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Mark, uh, number ten is a. Uh, Oh, Mark's gone. Okay. Number 10 um, is a pony, and number 5 is a horse, and their sound is neigh. A horse neighs. It's the onomatopoeia word. Uh, okay. And then we have a goose, hawk, hawk, and uh, looks like an ox or oxen. Do we have oxen here? Uh, cockerel, another name for a rooster. Do we have ox here? No, where's where's that? It's bull. the bull. Oh, it's a bull. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, okay. We are not only out of time. We are over time. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you.